Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. It's Holly with Journal with Dolly. Today, what we're gonna be doing is a video that I have had on the back burner for a really, really long time. Um, it's a journal with me, as you can see. <laughs> and, and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be answering some questions that um, you have asked me over on my Instagram. So I put on my Instagram story about two weeks ago. It could have been longer than that now, actually, maybe about three weeks ago. Um, if you had any questions for me for an upcoming journal with me, um, and you guys, you came through. There is a lot of questions. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but I've written them all down. So I'm hoping that 26 minutes is going to be long enough um, to answer them because you've gone in hard on some of these questions. So I'm going to have to really think about the answers. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for asking me all of these. Um, there's some really interesting ones. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I just have not had the time to get this video out any sooner. And I want to say sorry for it, but I did touch on it a little bit on my, in my uh, Instagram. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not going to apologise, alright? I know that sounds cocky and a little bit rude, but I'm just not, guys. I've been way too busy. Since lockdown has gone and all the restrictions have gone, I have not stopped. Either in um, work or um, in my social life or with my family or whatever. I've just, I have literally not stopped since about June. Every single weekend has been packed. Every single weekend that I've got coming up um, at the moment is absolutely packed as well. I've got stuff on and I'm not making excuses. I genuinely have not had the time. Um, I mean, today we've literally just come back from celebrating um, Will's auntie's 60th last night. And I've got a few hours now between having my tea and going to bed. And I thought, right, we're going to crack on and we're going to film this video and we're going to get the hairdryer out. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna dry some pages. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna you know we are gonna actually do this Q and A. So that's my little uh, ramble over about um, you know wh why I've been gone. I've just been absolutely super duper busy. So we're gonna go into these questions now. Um, and I haven't really written a script. I've literally just written the questions out and done some bullet points. So if I get rambling, I'm sorry. Um, the first question is, are you enjoying your new job? Okay, so um, for those of you who don't know, or you just need a recap, um, basically I have been with the same college now for two and a half years. I work at one of the biggest colleges in the UK. It's absolutely massive. We've got about 25,000 kids, so they we're really big. Um, college in the UK is different to college in America um, and overseas. So America college is like university where you're 18 plus. College uh, where we are is when you finish school, when you're 16, you could then go to college afterwards to get extra qualifications to be able to go to uni or get a job or whatever it is you want to do next. Um, and basically, I've moved departments recently to um, another department, which is our mental health um, and social emotional mental health needs department and um, so we're a completely different campus we're really small we've only got about 150 kids and um, a lot of them have a lot of things going on and um, they've had a lot going on in the past and it can be really hard sometimes but guess what I absolutely love it I am loving my new job it is so rewarding and the kids are just amazing I mean you do get some <laughs> you do get some uh, lively ones and bouncy ones and stuff like that but they're absolutely fab. All the staff are absolutely lovely. It's not toxic at all. At all. You listen to. Um, I've literally been very open with my new managers from the start and said, you know, I am wanting to do my teach training at some point. Well, even that has been amazing because what I'm doing now is another reason why I've not had time to film and stuff and journal, and that's why I'm so behind, is that they're actually paying for me to do a level three teaching course um, on an evening and um, it is you know there's quite a lot of work involved and you've got to do essays and things like that again but it is a level three it's just it's just below a university degree so it's a bit like a foundation kind of a level equivalent but it doesn't make me a qualified teacher at the end because it's only a few weeks but basically what it is is it's just an introductory course just to see if I like it if I like the workload you know all that kind of thing so I swear Will only ever wants to talk to me whenever I'm filming. I literally, 
I was like, I'm in the middle of talking. Um, he's fine. He just wanted to see when we were ordering takeaway. <laughs> we're getting Moroccan. Can't wait. Mm, kebabs and stuff and hummus and tzatziki and nice stuff. Uh, yeah, whatever. So, um, yeah. So, basically, what I was saying is, yeah, they're really, really supportive. They've also said that after that, um, drama would be a really good addition to the kids um, that we work with. So they actually want to potentially, it's a very high chance, pay for my teacher training and actually just keep me on as a member of staff with them, uh, which is amazing because, to be honest, I was really struggling to try and save for a house next year and save for my holiday next year and have a social life and also pay for... Uh, saving up to do my teaching because I'd need about five grand, four or five grand saved. So it's really good. Anyway, that's that's the crux of it. I'm absolutely loving it. The kids are great and my managers are just fab and it just makes you realise what a difference it makes when you have good management. Um, and yeah, so if you're a manager, guys, look after your staff because happy staff equal a good, healthy happy place you know everyone's chill um so yeah so that's how my job's going so thank you for asking um another question i got is who are some of your biggest inspirers so inspiration so i don't know if you mean in life in general or for journaling so for journaling i have quite a few and i've talked about them extensively throughout my uh throughout my channel but we've got rebecca who pocket journal pam lovelin's life um relax cut glue never hopeless by elizabeth ages inspired life girl got a glue um there's there's loads of people that i that i watch megan's diary i used to watch the nerd journals but i think her channel isn't no more which i'm quite sad about but it is what it is um yeah, so there's loads and loads of people that I like to I like to watch. Um, in life, in general, um, biggest, my, well, my main three are Audrey Hepburn, which everybody knows. I assume if you've been here any sort of time, you, that you would know that. Um, I'm actually named after Holly Girl Lightly from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, so yeah, I have like an affinity with Audrey, and I just absolutely love everything she stood for and. Um, all of the humanitarian work she did, which inspired me to go to Bangladesh and live there for a few um, few months, which obviously then takes me on to George Harrison, who is my second inspiration in life because I just think he's the best Beatle and anybody that tells me otherwise is wrong. And George is amazing and he also did loads of stuff for Bangladesh as well. So that was another thing why I wanted to go there. And one of the weird things actually is when I was in Bangladesh, was there was a shrine to him at like one of the big parks that we went to and none of the locals knew who he was they had absolutely no idea that he was in the Beatles and didn't know what the Beatles were and they just thought he was this guy that raised loads of money for him after the war and I was like uh no and yeah it was just really funny because um I played him some Beatles and stuff and they were all like all oh, right um and then my third inspiration in life is my granddad um well I guess I should say it was, that's pretty sad, isn't it? But um, yeah, he, he died about two years ago now, so that's really sad. But no, he was amazing. He grew up in the war and he actually was wrongly diagnosed with TB when he was little. So he didn't actually go to school until he was 10. Um, and he literally lived in like horrible slums in London in like... Uh, and then he had to move to Leeds, which is where we live now. And again, in like slums and stuff. And then his house got bombed again. So then he had to move to uh, Hull, which is obviously where I'm from. And um, yeah, he didn't go to school till he was 10. He taught himself to read. And then he actually ended up being a teacher and a mathematician in the army. And was really, really a very, very educated man. And ended up with like four degrees from university, like two masters, like really, really inspirational stuff and ended up in a massive house and lived in a huge house and everything that we went to when I was young and things like that. So my granddad is someone who I'll always look up to um, and I miss him literally every single day. It's really sad. <laughs> um, so next question was, what was the worst, what was the best band and the worst band at Leeds Fest this year? So if you haven't seen my Leeds Fest vlog, go ahead and have a look at it. Um, it's a flip through as well, journal flip through. The best for me was probably Biffy Clyro because 
they're just always really good. Um, and the Wombats, and I know that's a bit of a weird choice, but like genuinely, the Wombats are one of my favourite bands of all time. Um, they're just so cute, and I just they have a lot of memories attached, good memories and things like that. So I love seeing them, and they're just good festival vibes. Sam Fender, he isn't a band; he's on his own, but he was also really good. And I don't even like listen to him, so that proves that he was amazing. Now, the worst person, 100%, was The Hunter. Now, The Hunter are a little band. Um, we've seen them a couple of times before, and they've never been too bad. Um, however, absolutely dreadful. I mean, it was horrendous. We actually left because it was so bad. Um, and it was just really horrible. So, yeah, The Hunter, 100% were the worst. They were really terrible. Um, what brings you the most joy about your journal pages? probably the textures of feeling them when I'm flipping back and I know that sounds really weird but like you know when you look back on your journal pages and it like feels all crinkly and there's like things you can open and flip up and all that kind of stuff I love that and seeing all the different things that I've used like stuck on the pages um and obviously seeing all the memories and especially like I say about my granddad and stuff like he's not with us anymore so being able to look back at things he said and you know all that kind of stuff so yeah definitely that um what are your aspirations for 2022 not a clue i have got no idea i can't even try and pretend that i know because i just don't um obviously now my teaching things changed a little bit it's kind of up to my managers when they want me to do that and also if we hit the numbers and if there's enough kids and enough interest for me to do it and all that kind of thing um so i genuinely don't know um i've passed my maths now so i can't use that as an aspiration i guess i could say lose weight but i mean mm, i don't know if that's ever gonna happen i mean i know i definitely should but um it's just one of those things isn't it it's, it's gaining up the wanting to do it i mean i'd also like to say like travel more and stuff like that but again that's money dependent buying our house that's money dependent if there's a house we like and stuff so 2022 is going to be amazing if covid just pisses off and leaves but um yeah i don't honestly know yet i can't i can't tell you what they are because i don't know um next question what do you recommend purchasing if you've just started journaling okay so if what you really need to do first is you need to get a really good notebook and a pen that you like writing with and then you need to work out why you're journaling what is it that you want to get from it is it because you want to make memories and just write stuff down is it more stream of consciousness you know um conscious whatever the word is i don't know uh writing where you're just writing because to get things off your mind is it because you're wanting to do bullet journaling and do lots of lists and make yourself more organized you need to work out that because i can't tell you what you should be getting if you don't if i don't know what your intention is mine is i just like making things look pretty and i like making my memories you know stick down on paper so i've got them to look back on but if your intention isn't that then it's no point keeping loads of ephemera and loads of papers and loads of stickers and stuff because you might not want to do that you might want to just you know so i think look around see what type you want to do experiment a little bit but definitely good pens and a good notebook that you're motivated to write in and motivated to to work in that is the most important thing to buy first, I think. And I know people say, oh, buy a cheap notebook. But no, buy yourself a good notebook that you know is going to you know, last you and that you're wanting to work in. Because if you get a rubbish one, you're not going to want to work in it. Um, and a good pen as well, because if you get a pen that cramps your hand or it's not comfortable to write with or it's scratchy or it runs out, whatever, you, again, you're not going to want to. So get some nice pens and get a good notebook and then work it out why you want to journal and how you want to as well. Next one is favourite washi shop. Okay, I've got a few. So the range is really good for washi tape, but I've actually kind of got all of the ones that they sell now <laughs> uh, paper chase is another one they do really good washi tape but they are getting harder to find in paper chase now don't really know why but they're just kind of lacking with their stock there um etsy is a really good one if you want some really quirky washes that you can't get you know anywhere else uh, and finally fred aldous is my favorite shop ever it sells empty 
only tapes um and mt is one of my favorite brands ever a washi tape you get massive rolls they last ages they're really really good quality but they are more expensive you're looking at kind of three to sort of six pounds a roll which i know wah, it's a lot but trust me they they are worth it but fred Aldous, if you're not near one uh, there's one in london sheffield manchester and leeds i literally live around the corner it's dangerous but if you're not in any of those places they do have a website i don't know if they do um if they do ship abroad but you need to check that but yeah if you're in the uk then they definitely ship out there another good one is miso papers they that's an online shop i actually want to give away from them and they do amazing washi tape too so yeah they're definitely one of them um defining personality trait definitely been weird uh being really weird and funny i think am i too they kind of go hand in hand but i'm very odd um when people first meet me they're like oh god you're really 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 weird aren't you and I'm like oh I don't know I am just really kooky and a bit strange um I talk about poo a lot I love talking about poo and farts and I found all that really funny I love cartoons and Spongebob I'm a bit of a kid at heart really um but yeah I I'm definitely I, I think that's definitely what it is um what got you into journaling in the first place well firstly bullet journaling i've talked about this again on my channel before um bullet journaling definitely was where it all began because i needed to get more organized when i was at uni and then i finished uni and i felt like there was a gap in my life because bullet journaling was not needed anymore because i was literally getting up going to work coming back cooking tea doing some cleaning and going to bed i didn't have to schedule you know rehearsals going out and doing this because i did drama if you don't know um you know rehearsals going and doing seminars going and doing lecture coming back going blah, 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 going out for the night whatever it was um i didn't have that anymore and especially moving to a brand new city where i didn't know anyone except will um yeah i didn't have any friends either to have a social life with so i didn't need to a bullet journal so i decided to do uh proper journaling just to get thoughts on paper and to kind of document what it was like living in leeds with no friends and you know it's been amazing because now i have got full documentation from the moment i started in leeds to now and now i can say i've got lots of friends here and i'm really happy and i love it and i never want to move and um yeah it's just lovely and um, that is basically what it stemmed from boredom and bullet journaling so most loved slash hated journal supply so loved has to be ephemera from your trips out and stuff like that so tickets receipts anything like that i love that because it's free um you can pick it up wherever you go and also nobody else is going to have it and my most hated is probably overpriced products i don't like really expensive stuff um the, you know i do like good quality things but if it's really bad quality and it's really really um overpriced just because of you know what um what the brand is i'm not about that i think that's really crap um i'm gonna have to whiz through these last questions guys how are you coping with your anxiety health anxiety at the moment a lot better thank you so much for asking um yeah a lot better i still have the health anxiety a little bit it's still there um i'm learning to live with it now a lot better um i'm on the waiting list for counseling and stuff i've been put on sertraline and that has literally changed my life um, i'm much better since being put on that um but yeah i'm still getting like lots of aches and pains and stuff like that i'm putting it down to dehydration to be honest i definitely don't drink enough but like yeah i'm not thinking i'm dying every five minutes anymore if i'm getting an ache and pain i get in the bath i have my own coping mechanisms i come in here or i play on my animal crossing or stardew valley on my switch and i just chill out that's that's honestly what i like to do um and it's helping me at the moment so yeah much better thank you for asking i think work's a good distraction as well um another question that kind of comes on with this how do you deal when life gets tough i've been struggling recently i need some advice bless you um well talk about it is the most important thing whoever you have in your life that you can trust if you don't have anyone that you can speak to like that i hope that's not the case but if is that that is the case then you can definitely ring samaritans and places like that we refer kids there all the time and they really do help they're fantastic organizations and they're free numbers to ring i'm not sure obviously abroad but i'm guessing there will be similar services um 
and go to your doctor if it is affecting your everyday life they can definitely help i know again if you're abroad it could be more difficult if you have to pay for the doctor's appointments i'm so grateful that we get it for free but obviously if you can afford it or you can get there then then go to doctors but you know do some self-care try and help yourself the best you can talk to people put some candles on have a bath i know that sounds really simple but it does it does help just you know at least for me it does um marginally for a small amount of time and just talk to people and just if you do need that help admit it that you do and please 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 go and help it because things do get better okay um dream travel destination that i haven't been to yet new york that is number one place i would like to go to caribbean is also there but i'm going to the caribbean next year now so i don't know if i can answer that <laughs> um but yeah new york city 100 percent um if you couldn't live in the uk anymore where would you want to live um difficult question but probably budapest because i love budapest and it's in hungary which has got some questionable um conservative views especially around like lgbt and things like that which i'm not too mad about but budapest is very very more westernized um i mean i don't want to say westernized it's in the west but i don't know how to explain it it's a lot more uh, liberal than the rest of the country and i definitely could cope with that and it's really cheap and it's amazing and it's just beautiful and uh, yeah i would love to live in budapest if i could afford a flat there just to buy as an extra home then i probably would um go to guilty pleasure food definitely mcdonald's i don't really like mcdonald's as an organization but man when i need a mac is there's just not better is there there really isn't my order is a chicken nugget happy meal with a side order of a double cheeseburger because i'm a fat bitch yeah uh, that's what i always get with a fanta or a sprite or a, or a, or a full fat cook depending on what mood I'm in. But yeah, definitely a McDonald's. I also am really partial to a double quarter pounder with cheese. Oh my Lord. No pickles though, but yeah, with sweet and sour dip. Oh my Lord, I want a Mackey's now. Um, no, I'm having Moroccan. Shut up. <laughs> um, do you look and read through your old journals often? Yeah, not really. I mean, if I'm in the mood, I, I usually get them out if I'm trying to prove a point. If Will's like, no, that didn't happen. I'm like stay there i run in i look through it like a mad woman and i come back and i'm like it's there i told you and he's like oh okay um best band you have ever seen live this is a very difficult question i do not know the answer i'm just gonna reel some off the 1975 are always fantastic lana del rey was amazing florence and the machine was amazing wombats as i've said they're just uh, my guilty pleasure band and i just love them and one of the best gigs i've ever been to in my whole life was probably architects at ali pali alexandra palace in london um it was a fantastic gig they're very heavy they're one of their band members died of cancer when he was very young so a lot of their songs are pretty dark but fantastic band absolutely excellent i also really fancy the main singer because he really loves the beatles and that's hot to me um what watercolors do you use for backgrounds um so prima classics palette is my favorite that was actually sent to me from a lovely subscriber who sent me it because she didn't need it um it's my favorite i will definitely be buying them again Windsor and Newton are a really good brand that I have and also Giotto glitters which I've used on this page they're fantastic as well and then the final question guys we are there is plans for the half term so if you don't know um it's half term currently here in leeds which means we're halfway through to christmas and that's where the teachers obviously get uh, a break i do not get the full week off because i work with a lot of external agencies and companies and things in my role so it's a good time for me to get into those whilst the schools are closed and um, so my plan is monday to wednesday i am working tuesday afternoon i've got off there because i'm getting my hair done yay go over to my instagram to see what i get um yeah bit of a surprise because i'm going a bit funky of course the blue is going um and then thursday to sunday me and will are actually going to derbyshire uh, to a little cottage and we're actually going to eam 
which is where I went when I was 10 on a residential trip with school. Uh, but it's basically the place where the plague started. Now, I don't mean COVID, guys. I mean the Black Death. Um, and yeah, you get to go on like plague walks and like there's like old cottages and stuff and it's just really cool um, and I'm really excited to go and we're staying in this little lovely cottage and there's not really much there, there's like a pub and uh, some countryside walks and like a fish and chip shop and I'm just going to take some craft stuff and he's going to take his things and we're literally, we are just going to have four days of doing absolute jack shit. We're doing nothing, guys. Um, because, like I say, we've just been non-stop. So we're going to get the train down um, and we're going to go there. And yeah, if you want to see my little adventures when I am there, pop over to my Instagram as always and you can see what we get up to because I would love you to come along. Oh, we got through all the questions with... Uh, less than a minute to spare. I'm pretty proud of that. So I'm going to go now because Will has been coming in and knocking on the door asking for when we're ordering kebabs. So we're going to go and order a tagine and some kebabs and tzatziki and mmm, can't wait. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been lovely chatting to you all again. I've super missed doing videos. Please leave me a comment and everything down below. I've seen I'm getting a lot less comments at the moment. I don't know why. I love them. Please keep them coming. Um, pop one below and I will love heart it uh, or reply to you. And yeah, I will see you in my next video, whenever that will be. Love talking to you as always. Bye, guys.